we are testimony. But as was speaking. Allow me to read from Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 12. And the Bible says, this is NIV, if you have NKGV, if you can James Version, if you have it, you can, you can project this for us. Yeah, it says, though a sinner does evil and a hundred times, and his days are prolonged, yet I surely know that it will be well with those who fear God, who fear before him. But as was if here. It shall be well with those who fear the Lord. This message really blessed me this morning. And uh, I want to encourage all of us that beginning from the Jews, the, second, the third years, the, the second years, and the first years, we are going out there. Most of the Jews, we are, going, we are going out there. Many times you will find, you will see maybe the, those who doesn't know the Lord to be prospering. Many times you may want to have a life that they have. We are going out, outside there, we are going to seek for job opportunities. When I said that interview, we will go and say, I will never get a new party. But I want to tell you one thing this morning that surely one thing I know that it shall be well with those who fear the Lord. I want to encourage somebody that let us remain in the fear of the Lord. When as was feel, when you go out there, let us not compromise. And even for the first, the second, and the third years, this is the message that I'm leaving for us. That please, 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 let us remain in the fear of the Lord. Many times, there are things that happen in our lives and they may discourage us. But I want to tell you, it will be well with those who fear the Lord. And as it, uh, as it says, who fear before him? When as was feel, let us have that fear. Even when everything around you is not going as by your wish, let us remain in the fear of the Lord. I think this is the message that I can leave for us, that situations may be very tough, back at home there may be nothing you are expecting, in school there is nothing that you have at hand, but it shall be well with those who fear the Lord. When yes, was in fear. So, before I welcome the speaker, I want, I want the, because to make us, and I want the present worship to just sing for us this worship song, Speaker Nigeria. There is someone who can lead us through, there is this song that says, Some of you who 
are still single through 30 years. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I'm new here. That's why I'm being my Uh No. <laughs> no. Exactly uh, what do we do at Thanks Forum? I need to lay foundation to this particular message. And I believe that those of us who are still sitting for exams and there's just someone shouting, burning in your heart, like just leave right now and call advice. Now don't let that don't let that I'm shouting win over you. Stay put till to the end of the service. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to talk about faith, then I will bring in exactly what you do at Thanks Forum. I want to talk about faith. Because faith is a crucial element of a Christian. It's a crucial, important component of any believer. And sometimes I don't think if in the body of Christ we lay enough due emphasis on faith the way we should as believers. The Bible tells us in the book of Habakkuk, 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 okay. <laughs> when Prophet Habakkuk is writing to the nation of Judah and they're about to be taken away into captivity by the Chaldees or the Babylonians and it is a very miserable season actually there's even no hope for repentance he did not call them to repentance he was just coming to tell them in black and white that you people are going to be taken into captivity because of your rebellion against the Lord. And actually the, the name Habakkuk means one who wrestles with God, a wrestler. And in that season, Habakkuk writes a verse that is key and crucial to the New Testament church in Habakkuk 14, if you can scream that. He says, for the just shall live by faith. The righteous shall live by faith. Now, the right rendering actually is not the just shall live by faith. The right rendering is the just shall live by his faith. Where? Faith in the Lord. Faith in God. Is it there? If you can scream from New King James Version. Huh? 14. Sorry. I'm going to get the wrong two. Um, let me just get it. Someone has put it in where it is? Habakkuk 2 4. Is it 2 4? Or 4 2? Am I mixing two? It's 2 4? It's 2 4? Yes, 2 4. But the just shall live by his faith. That's the right rendering. That's why I like you in James Washington. Because most scholars actually agree that it is the most accurate of versions. Not that I'm undermining the other versions. So the just shall live by his faith. Now, this is what is interesting about this particular verse. This verse becomes quoted three times in the New Testament. Not once, not twice, but thrice in the New Testament. And we know God is the God who lays emphasis on things that are supposed to be deeply embedded in our spirits. For it to be quoted three times by New Testament writers tells you something that this is crucial. The just shall live by his faith. Because it's quoted in Romans 1.17 and then it's quoted in Galatians 3.11 and then it's quoted in Hebrews 10.38. Can you put up Romans 1.17? One to ask you very quickly. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by faith. The born again believer, his life, her life was wired to be lived by faith. But as you you as you are, as a believer in Jesus Christ, as long as you're born again, you are wired to live by faith. Hallelujah. Now I'll take us through some verses 
that actually speak to us what faith is. So the just, and listen, it is righteousness by faith. That's why Paul will write in the book of Philippians and say that I may be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but the righteousness of God by faith in Christ. Because sometimes in the body of Christ we think that we can be righteous by our own performance, by our own effort, by our own trying to be righteous. And that's why we miss the mark. And we think right living will produce right believing when it's supposed to be the other way around. It is right believing producing right living. Hallelujah. Second, the last verse of 2 Corinthians 5 says, He made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that us through him we might become the righteousness of God. Do you know positionally you are God's own righteousness? <laughs> Even though you messed up yesterday, you messed up this morning. Listen, it doesn't change your position. And listen, that is the position you're supposed to move from and then I'll live a right life. It is right uh, believing that produces right living. Right believing producing right living. You are God's own righteousness in Christ Jesus. It never changes. Buenas yes, It's by faith. Ephesians 2.8, you can put it up. Ephesians 2.8 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. Listen carefully. Is it up? For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Listen. The gift of God. In other words, it is of God. It is not of you. It embodies all the three things mentioned before. It is not just salvation. All the three. It mentions grace. It mentions salvation. It mentions faith. All these three are a gift of God. Sometimes you think it's only salvation that is a gift of God. No, all the three mentioned. So you are saved by grace through faith, and all those three are a gift of God. It is not you, it is from God. So the faith that you have, it is not your faith, it is the faith of God in you. He has dealt to each one of us a measure of faith. Actually, it says the measure of faith. <laughs> that tells you something. It doesn't say a measure, it says the measure of faith. That tells you something, that that is one of its kind. One of its, each one of us has the measure of faith. You will not come to repentance to receive Jesus Christ into your heart if God did not put faith in your heart to believe on his son. Psalms will tell us, blessed is the man whom God chooses and causes to approach him. He caused you to approach him. He gave you the measure of faith. Now, what does it mean? Then how come some people, you know, how uh, it doesn't mean those who are, uh, you know, have more faith than others. I don't think so. I believe that it is just others have more faith operative than others. But all of us have the same measure of faith. Hello? Okay. Jesus, or in the New Testament, we learn in the Gospels, we learn Jesus will say in so many places that let it be, a, let it be to you according to your, according to your, according to your faith. <laughs> and he mentioned yeah, the three, these three things. When we read the book of Matthew, uh, there's a place where it says clearly that there in Nazareth, he could not do many mighty works because of their unbelief. In other words, it was zero faith. When I say are we together? He could not do many mighty works in Nazareth because of their unbelief. And then, in another place in the Gospels, we are told if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, be removed. And faith as a mustard seed, that means what? Small faith as a mustard seed. Hello? And then Jesus talks about the centurion. The one who say, don't come under my roof, but if you just say a word, then my servant shall be well. And Jesus said, he has great faith. He had not found such great faith in his life. So we have unbelief, no faith. We have small faith, and we have great faith. So where? Answer yourself in your heart. <laughs> Buenas Vista. Faith is a muscle. 
it has to be exercised to be stronger and stronger. And that is why if you go back to that verse in Romans 1, 17, it says, from faith to faith. It's a muscle. The question is this. Have you been exercising it enough to be strong? Because it only becomes stronger and stronger with uh, increased exercise. When I say something, a baby, wakati mtoto anajifunza kutembea, anajaribu kusimama, anaanguka. It's because the, he has to exercise those leg muscles until they are strong enough to support the rest of the body. Ata jenu kusimama anahuka all the time. Alafu ata kwa anahuza kuanguka. Atisa naza simama. Then anahuza kutembea. Because the leg muscles are becoming stronger and stronger with increased exercise. And that is why in the tough times, in the times of adversity, like it was for Habakkuk, it is your faith that you're supposed to live by. It is your faith that you're supposed to live by. Wanna say something? Okay, let's just let's just write through some, some few verses. In, in Romans 5.1, it says Romans 5.1, Romans 5.1, um, you'll have to speak very fast because of time. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Next. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace through whom we also have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. Listen, we have been justified by faith. Justified simply means rendered or regarded or declared righteous before God. By faith. You are regarded righteous before God. And Abraham believed and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Blessed is the man whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sin is covered, to whom the Lord will not impute iniquity. You've been declared righteous, listen, by faith, but you have to take it by faith. You have to take, listen, grace has made it available, but it's your faith that takes it. <coughs> How? You have to believe that you're righteous. As messed up as I am, yes. You're still struggling with A, B, C, D, yes. But you are still the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He has declared you righteous by faith. Is that a license? Is that a license for you to go and see Paul will say, no, God forbid. Hello? If anything, it sets you free to be right. When I say something. So, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. Listen, God is not against you. God is for you, as long as you are a believer. You have to take the forgiveness. Some of us, God has forgiven us stuff, but we still walk in bitterness and unforgiveness towards ourselves because we have not taken that forgiveness by faith. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. Let's just run through a few verses very quickly. 2 Corinthians, uh, put up the chart. Thank you. Um, very quickly. 2 Corinthians 4.13. Put up 2 Corinthians 4.13. 2 Corinthians 4.13. Very fast. Still in. And since we have the same spirit of faith, listen, spirit of faith, and since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe that therefore I spoke. Therefore we also, we, the New Testament church believers, we also believe and therefore speak. The spirit of faith speaks faith. Yeah. What you mean, listen, faith is made complete by speaking. Yeah. What you believe if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, speaking to the mountain. Faith is made complete by 
speaking, words have to come from your mouth. With the heart one believes, with the mouth confession, speaking yes. is meant unto salvation. You believe in your heart, you speak it forth until it for it to be complete. So the spirit of faith speaks faith. What you believe God has put in your heart, you have to speak it into the atmosphere. So, uh, that is very important that we have to the people who speak faith. Let's go to Ephesians. Very fast. Just two scriptures from there. Because I want you to understand. No, no, before you go to Philippians, please go to 2 Corinthians 5 7. It's crucial. 2 Corinthians 5 7. Right? Okay. It says, For we walk, we know that one. For we walk. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Sight means you don't walk. Listen, listen. Sight here is because of your five senses. The strongest is sight. What do you see? Sight here represents all your five senses. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by not what is seen in the spirit and in the physical realm. We walk by what we know and have seen in the spirit. And not what we feel and what we experience and see in the physical realm. Oh, yes. I believe God is walking behind the scenes. I can see it. I see as if things are so messed up. I see as if things are going backward. But I don't go by what I sense in my five senses, what I'm seeing. I don't go by, by that. I go by what I believe. I believe in my spirit, in my knower. I know that I know that I know God is walking behind the scenes. And that is what I live by. That is what I live by. How do I live by it? By speaking it. By thinking like it, talking like it. Praying like it. Living like it. Are you together? Can you go to Ephesians? Very quickly, uh, Ephesians, you can screen, you can, Ephesians 2, 8, beginning that one, and then you go to Ephesians um, 6, 16. For my grace, you've been saved through faith. I think we, we've looked at this. You've been saved through faith. That not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. All the three are a gift of God. You have the measure of faith put in your heart by God himself. But how big it gets, it depends on you. It's a muscle you have to exercise, okay? Up, go to 6.16. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Taking the shield of faith. Taking the shield of faith. Above all, taking... Okay, you tell me that is Old Testament. What about New Testament? There's a church in the New Testament which Paul prayed for and he made a very specific special prayer and he said that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. Which church is that? Hello? Which church? Come on, Bible readers. Which church? Hmm? There, the church at Ephesus. Ephesians 1.18. Ephesians 1.18. I need to move on, I need to move on. Efficiency, one, two. Now the eyes of...